Hello Ghana and welcome to this week's edition of Iron Port. It's brought to you by Star Assurance, UT Logistics, uh, GCNet and our new entrant, the Royal Bank. Now the Royal Bank, the entire team of the Royal Bank, including my own former professor, Professor Kwame Banyako and Mavis at the marketing department, all believe we should bring the activities of the port closer to you and also you closer uh, to the port. This week, there's a lot of talks about uh, facilitating trade within Ghana and within the West African sub-region. And Tema Port is leading the way. We sat down with the director of the port of Tema, Jacob Adoko, to ask a lot about what the port is doing to ensure trade facilitation. A lot of Ghanaians do not know what actually the port seeks to do. The port is in existence to, or the port is constructed to handle your cargo. That is it. Discharge the cargo for you, store it for you. When you are ready to take it, come and then process your document and pick your cargo. For example, when you are going to import frozen cargo in refrigerated containers, there are processes you have to go through first before you can even take the decision to import. Can we, some of us, the importers, do not know. First of all, you have to go for a permit from the Ministry of agriculture i see for any frozen food frozen frozen chicken frozen uh, uh, meat fish you need permit to bring from the ministry of for agriculture. The meat. even before you decide Be to bring. before you decide to bring you have to go for the permit now when you bring the cargo without that permit You'll be frustrated. You will definitely be frustrated more than anything because you now know how to go to the ministry to seek for the permit. And the minister will definitely tell you, since you do not have the permit before importing, the container should still be in the port. And then you have a lot of challenges. That is why some of the, our, our, our colleagues have to leave their containers, abandon the containers in the port after spending a lot of money to pay for the, 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 the cargo and spending a lot of money to put it in, the, in, in a refrigerated container and then transferring it to Ghana only to be told that you cannot clear your cargo. So currently, I want to advise all importers that before you take a decision to import anything at all, find out the regulations regarding those items. Another one is use fridges, use TV sets. There are regulations and rules concerning them, but Ghanaians, we go there, we see them, they are very cheap. We collect them, we buy them, and we put them in a container, and we bring them to the country, only to be faced with the regulations. And the various agencies are in the port to see to it that those regulations are implemented. And because they are in the port to make sure the regulations are, are complied with, the consignee becomes frustrated. Yeah. And it, is, it becomes a problem for the port authority because we provide space for the cargo. We provide the facility. We provide the equipment. And because we are providing all these things, people think it is the port authority you are the who, one taking which is frustrating. Yes, we are not. But, but do you then also agree and with some of the importers who think that the, the agencies who work around you or work uh, to uh, with the port authority are just too many. Yeah, I, I agree to that. In, in in some jurisdictions, what happens is that you fill only one form, and that form is downloaded onto a system, and all the agencies have access to that form because the form they will ask you what is your name, your company, your consignee name. It it ran across across everybody. The product where it's imported from it ran across all the all the agencies yeah. so when you fill that document you download it on a on, on a platform and all the companies can all the agencies can assess, can assess it. it and as, as they assess they give you approval online and if they give you approval online you can easily come to the port and take your cargo without it yeah. that is the way forward and, and that's, why are we not doing that who champions it that's the question the authority should cannabis and Habos authority is not licensed to to we have a ministry which must champion it. That's the Ministry of Trade. They must champion that cause. And I'm sure the Ministry of Trade should ensure that you know the agencies working within the port share one platform. Plus, that, that, that is how it should be. When we come up with our platform, would the other agencies want to come along with us? That is the question. So there should be a political authority. A center that would mandate everybody, everybody to, come to come together and look. So yeah. I, I will encourage the Ministry of Trade, the or Ministry of Finance, either, either one of the two, because customs work directly at the Ministry of Finance. Mm. Yeah, to 
to come up with that platform where all agencies can assess information on and then they can easily because it shouldn't approve. be difficult for customs to assess any information from from GPHA, the GPHA or the standards authority or the, at all. the immigration at all. service or, at all at all because As, it's it's frustrating for a concerning who has brought in items and then you find standard authority collecting samples you have uh, food and drugs food authority and drugs authority collecting samples yes ministry of agriculture is collecting agriculture. samples why can't one sample be used by all of these that people? is a, that is the issue about Somebody say single window, but we are using that concept loosely. Currently, everybody stand alone. How are you pushing that as you push for expansion, you're also pushing for cohesion in terms of operation? In fact, that is one of our agenda. Now, as we are moving into a new era, an era of electronic, an era of technology, that is why we are also encouraging the Ministry of Finance or the Ministry of Tr uh, trade, trade to come up with that facility if we will give them some chance if they will not be an action an action authority, authority and we'll make sure it. we will lead a, we will lead the fight i noticed even before you enter the spot you have to use your biometric or your id card before you enter any building belonging to the port authority uh, you also have vessel uh, booking system coming on the website very soon people will have to sit at home and book their vessels online talk to us about some of the automation yeah. works going on yeah the first automation thing that we we saw was about the f the physical condition of containers we traveled and we saw it it was a problem for us containers come into the port they leave the port and People will come back and say the container was damaged. Shipping lines will say we have damaged their containers. Then we say no. We have seen some structures somewhere which can capture mm. the physical condition of the container okay. before it even leaves the port or before it comes into the port. Why can't we erect them? We have erected OCRs at our gates now. OCRs are supposed to be optical character camera character recognition, recognition yeah, cameras. cameras. If you are not allowed to enter the port, you will not enter the port with that truck. All these things we have seen it and we will implement and we have started implementing that's the first stage the second stage is the biometric verification of every worker of the port every individual operator in the port and that is also getting closer to closer to implementation now before you enter any gpha facility you need to use your biometric verification okay. before you can enter well, it is by the isps standard to secure the port the to port. ensure that people don't use the port facilities as a conduit to dupe people to dupe to terrorize yeah. and to do any nefarious activity okay. in your country that is why we have even raised our fence walls and put Constantina wires on all of them to make our port more secure for, for operations. Okay. The next stage is to come down to cargo operations. Currently, we tally everything by hand. And in the next few months, by July, we will introduce our terminal operating system electronically. electronically. And entered onto the platform, a GC net platform, that anybody can assess that cargo has even been landed in the port. Wow. So that is with cargo operations in the system. The next stage is cargo examination. We have encouraged a private operator, Nick TC Scan, to establish a new scanner in the port now. All in the old facility, not in the new one, all in the old facility, to assist as check the content of all containers which are leaving the port to the icds before they are even stored in the icds and as they are stored in the icds when you come in the port the next time you will not be asked to come back into the port to scan but rather the scan report is already at the icd you only take it and then examination will be facilitated all these things have been done to improve our efficiency level to improve cargo 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 delivery services in our port. When you go outside, you never see human beings in the port. It's only equipment and few operators. That is what the level, that's the level we are moving into now. And th that is supposed to reduce the issue where somebody has to tip someone and- All those, th all those, you. yes. Because everything there is electronic. Before you pay, you have your bill. And you pay to that amount. And you pay into a bank. You are not even paying to a GPHA worker. So all those activities of, homemade 
clearing agents will be will be stopped. Are you then saying that the work of the clearing agents are going to be the freed forwarders are going to be the abandoned? No, no. So they will be used in a different way. Explain that to us. No, the, the freed forwarders are the intermediaries between the owners, the consignees, and the port authority and the shipping lines. Okay. So, and then other agencies which work in the port. It is legal. They ask for their, their job is, 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 is legalized. Okay. So, what we are saying is that the actual freight forwarders, those who are licensed to work by customs, MGPHA, are the only people we are going to accept at the data center. Okay. If you don't have that ID card from GPHA, if you don't have that ID card from customs to work as a freight forwarder, you cannot enter our data center to come and transact business. Okay. And all the guru, like people call them guru boys, all the guru boys activities okay. will be stopped. So these licensed agents will still be working? They are, they are there. Okay. Because they are licensed, they are recognized. Every No, customs recognize them. Mm -hmm. GPHA recognize so them. So it's part of the electronic uh, you know implementations that we are putting together these people are not going to be out of job because that's been a, that's been a fear that that's been expressed by these people in the past at all they will never be at we rather want them good since they are genuine workers mm -hmm. to register biometrically with GPHA when you register biometrically with GPHA you don't have any fear mm -hmm. you will work we said we are turning our ports to be electronic compliance we are turning our point to be computerized you know, a computerized port that is what our face is very soon even our central gate to the port if we don't have your biometric information in our database you will never enter the port I see. yes this is what we are looking forward to so it appears the thermal port is not leaving any stone unturned as far as ensuring smooth uh, trade uh, within the West African sub region and in Ghana in particular is concerned. Iron Pod returns pretty shortly after the break. Star Shirts, creating smiles since 1985. Let go, let's celebrate 30 years of solid partnership. Star Assurance, your solid partner. I'll take care of you. There's a place in my heart that makes me feel that you're the one. It's a place I wanna be, cause that's his fashion guarantee. From strength to strength, you help me grow, cause you're there for me. And teach me how to be independent Cause you, you The Royal Bank The Royal Royal Bank The Royal Bank Banking with transparency Commitment to integrity The Royal Bank The Royal Royal Bank The Royal Bank The Royal Bank Real Banking Real Difference We are basically involved in clearing and forwarding, which is normally customs, brokerage. Um, we are also involved in provision of warehouse services and warehouse facilities. We have a fleet of haulage trucks that moves goods from one end to the other. And then we also involved in uh, moving and parking, real international relocations. Um, and in addition to that, we have um, we trade in commodities, so we buy and we sell, um, you know, agri products, cooking oil, um, rice, sugar, and all other um, special products that we can think of. Welcome back from the break. You're still watching Iron Port, brought to you by GCNet, Star Assurance, the Royal Bank, and also uh, UT Logistics. Coming up next are some activities happening within the port and maritime industry here in Ghana.
At a consultative forum on the World Trade Organization Agreement on Trade Facilitation, organized by the GCNet and Ghana Shippers Authority, speakers urged the business community to appreciate the contribution of logistics and trade acceleration to Ghana's developmental effort. We have a lot of maritime clusters that we need to benefit from, but unless there is trade facilitation and efficiency in the way in which we conduct our trade, we will not benefit from what we need to derive from these maritime clusters. It must involve the facilitation of trade along the entire logistics chain, removing the bottlenecks, reducing the barriers, and creating higher levels of efficiency, which would engender cost reduction and increase competitiveness. Stakeholders were charged to encourage smooth pre-arrival clearance processes at Ghana seaports. Inefficient clearance processes are to cost. Over serious inspection of course by inspection agencies and multiplicity, of all these agencies don't help. Several authorities are intent on undertaking their own responsibilities and of course maximizing the value for the state. But then again, what it means is that it takes longer. We have several border checks and what have you, several aspects of taxation which we need to harmonize. And I do believe that workshops such as this provide us all with a great opportunity to try and find ways of reducing the time it takes to clear cargo the taxes that we need to pay, and of course to harmonize our activities with regards to our inspection agencies. The Ministry is determined to review clearance procedures at the ports with a view to reducing clearance times in order to facilitate trade. The current situation, where about 15 different agencies are directly involved in the clearance process, is unacceptable. Gloomy picture of Ghana's position as far as trade facilitation was exposed. Going by the latest 2014 logistics performance index report issued by the World Bank, Ghana did not fare well in the rankings. We placed 100 out of the 160 countries. For example, in the area of timeliness, one of the six components by which countries' logistics performance are analyzed. Ghana ranked one the fifth. To facilitate trade, we must be ready to adopt new technologies. Ready to adopt the soft infrastructure that accelerates the process of clearing goods from our ports, which makes use of an effective and efficient single window system. Speakers advise stakeholders to, as a matter of urgency, come up with solutions to ensure effective trade in Ghana. Businesses operating in Ghana have been urged to adapt policies that will enable them to skew corruption and embrace integrity. Iron Port was exclusively invited to a high-level panel organized by the German Corporation Alliance for Integrity and the UN Global Compact, where corporate institutions were charged to reduce corruption and promote integrity. Corruption is one of the greatest constraints to development. Where corruption prevails, resources are wasted or mismanaged. In a corrupt environment, costs of entrepreneurship are considerably higher. Regardless of how successful you are, and thus the outcomes, you are, you are inefficient and suboptimal. You are wasting resources. A statistical picture of the perception of corruption among Ghanaian corporate institutions was painted by the Afrobarometer Survey, a Center for Democratic Development CDD project. Ghanaians perceive the police to be the most corrupt uh, public institution, and this is followed by the national government, that's government officials. A Chinese business delegation has called on the Director General of the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority to ascertain business opportunities within the ports and maritime industry. We want to invest some machinery equipment and uh, heavy trucks so that we can run the business in Ghana together. The Director General, flanked by the Board Chairman of GPHA and some members of the management team, assured the delegation that investment prospects exist in and around the two main ports of Ghana especially in the wake of the ongoing expansion works. We've already started that of uh, Takrali. Several hectares of land could be reclaimed from the sea. Uh, we've already done uh, the breakwater, the main breakwater, the lead breakwater. Uh, the dredger is currently in position. Richard and Amur revealed that the Takrali port has been zoned to create space for industrial development. We have zoned up Takrali in a way that um, 
we're looking at an S, an industrial estate, you know, in Takrari, where we'll be linking up between Takrari and the existing naval base. Um, there's a calm water base in there. So we look at just creating that into an industrial base for whatever facilities that might come out. The Port Ladies Association, comprising women working within the Ghana Port and Harbors Authority, have been urged to cultivate the habit of forgiveness in order to create an enabling working environment for efficiency in the port business. At a Christian program celebrating mothers in the month of May, the Port Ladies were reminded that being a woman constitutes a full-time responsibility, including personal family commitment, yet required to keep their professional jobs to benefit themselves their organizations and the national economy at large. Reverend Papa Yeboah, who led the Port Ladies through a praise and worship ceremony with the famous gospel musician Mary Ganza, advised that it is only when a friendly working environment is created that the ladies can contribute to the growth of the port and the nation. Women are powerful. Reverend Yeboa urged the ladies to be forgiven in their daily activities. Star Shorts, creating smiles since 1985. Let go, let's celebrate 30 years of solid partnership. Star Shorts, your solid partner. I'll take care of you. There's a place in my heart that makes me feel that you're the one. It's a place I wanna be, cause that's his fashion guarantee. From strength to strength, you help me grow, cause you're there for me. And teach me how to be independent Cause you, you The Royal Bank The Royal Royal Bank The Royal Bank Bank you with transparency Commitment to integrity The Royal Bank The Royal Royal Bank The Royal Bank The Royal Bank Real Banking Real Difference UT Logistics have come to stay. Um, when when you, you approach a job like the way we approach it, each job is unique. Uh, each client is unique. We provide the best um, service in the, in, the, in, in the system. We have best um, staff. We are very fast, we are quick, and we save customers a lot of, um, a lot of money. We are very transparent as well and we approach every job with professionalism and the seriousness that it, it, it requires. For us, every job is different, and our approach is different. We take our time to understand our customers, and we ensure that what our customers need is what we deliver. Well, next are some of your concerns and comments that you have sent us. Vivian Ankara from Tema says, Iron Port. I am worried about the numerous trucks that are parked at the shoulders of the roads around the port. Tell the authorities to do something about it. Sure, Vivi, I'm certain the authorities have heard you. Francis from La Paz texted, I want employment as a truck driver in the port. Well, Francis, I'm reliably informed the port is not yet recruiting, but do look out in the dailies for any search opportunities. Prophet Nana Kwesisapon from Amasaman says, I want to buy a car. Well, Prophet, the port does not sell cars. It facilitates the discharge of vehicles from vessels and store them for their individual owners to effect clearance from the port. Auctioning of vehicles are only done by customs and not the port. Asafuache from Begada called, I want to find out if the cars you showed in last week's program are for sale. <laughs> Asafuache, 
Those vehicles belong to their owners who use the port to import the cars, but does not belong to the port, hence are not being sold by the port. Fraud alert. GPHA does not auction. Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority wishes to inform the general public that the authority does not buy and sell on internet platforms and does not auction cars and other items in and around the port. Beware of fraudsters who claim to auction cars and other items in the ports and defraud people in the process. For further information, contact tema at ghanaports.net or call plus two three 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 zero three two zero two seven five eight. Beware of fraudsters. Tema Port Integrity Campaign. Employees are paid to serve you. Don't offer to pay any illegal money. From John Imba, Tema Port Integrity Ambassador. In case of difficulties, contact ghanaports.gov.gh. Well, that's it for this week's edition of Iron Port, and I hope I have been able to place your eyes on the ports of Ghana and also bring the port activities closer uh, to you. The program was supported by Star Assurance, UT Logistics, GCNet, and the Royal Bank. And I thank you for watching. I also thank my entire crew, Nana, AC Soderberg, Lydia Thumb, Isaac Tewia, and the executive producer, Paul Asariansa. See you same time next week on this same platform.